Fonnie Willis is the gift that has me working on a Saturday. What a treat for you. I cannot pass up this opportunity to talk about what's going on in Atlanta, what's going on with the craziest district attorney, prosecuting attorney, whatever Fonnie Willis is. She says so much about how far we've gone with this delusion about these Yaz queens and black women, they're gonna save democracy. Are, 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 are you kidding me? Are you kidding? And again, I know she does not represent all black women, but my God, is it all black women that have political power? Do they, are they all as crazy as Fonnie Willis? We'll get into that on a Saturday. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I'm Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Saturday. Thank you for joining me. Uh, let's thank Preborn for allowing us to join you on a Saturday. Uh, Preborn, you guys, you guys know, is uh, central to our worldview and our mission here as fearless soldiers in this fearless army. We support uh, the worldview and the belief and the knowledge and the fact that life begins at conception Preborn uh, supports that idea, that belief, better than any organization in America. Uh, they provide expected mothers ultrasounds, introduce that mother to her baby's heartbeat, image of the baby in the womb. That woman is now twice as likely to choose life. That's when Preborn really steps in and steps up uh, and provides that woman the support she needs throughout her pregnancy and throughout the first two years of that baby's life outside of the womb. Uh, whether you give $28, $280, $2,800, two million dollars, it all goes to a great cause. It all goes to saving babies' lives. There's two ways to give. Pound two five zero, say the keyword baby. Pound two five zero, say the keyword baby. Or give the way that I prefer to give. Preborn.com/fearless. That's preborn.com/fearless. Send me an email when you do. Fearlessblazeshow at gmail.com. Guys. I need you in this conversation. We're gonna bring Shamika into this conversation. I can't talk about Fonnie Willis without including another woman in the conversation because I just need someone here to make sure I don't go too far with my sexism or misogyny or whatever it is. Uh, Shamika, uh, welcome to Fearless on this great Saturday morning. Thank you for joining me. Look, I I'm gonna say, I, I told Shamika this morning, I was like, you know what, <clears throat> we're gonna mimic uh, Shannon Sharp and Ocho Cinco and Nightcap, and me and you are just gonna go back and forth until we're done uh, playing these Fonnie Willis highlights from her testimony and her corruption trial, whether she's banging the special prosecutor, is she, is, is let's just, before I play any clip, is Fonnie Willis, is she a sugar mama? Is, is, she, is, she, is she paying for sex? It sounds like she is. And Jason, is it Fonnie or Fanny? Because when she walked up to that stand, all I could hear was Ice Cube saying, felt on the big fat Fanny. Looked like someone had poured her in her dress, but she was falling out the bottom. I think she's a sugar mama. And with that body, she has to be. <laughs> all right. Uh, you mentioned the dress. Can we start there? There's a big controversy. Did she have the dress home backwards? <laughs> there are a lot of people contending she had that dress on backwards. Yeah, that that kind of looks like it's on backwards. It does. I mean, maybe it's some type of name brand that I've never seen or heard of. You know, with all the money that she talks about that she has stashed at, in her house. Maybe, you know, she can afford some things I've never seen before, which is the zipper coming right up to the neck in the front. <laughs> and the flag upside down. It, it, I hate to go here, but listening to this testimony is, listen, Trump's lawyers are trying to get her disqualified and her entire team disqualified from prosecuting him. And they're saying that uh, she 
is funneling money to this Nathan Wade, this special prosecutor that she hired. He's then using that money for them to go on these lavish vacations in Belize and I, the Bahamas and any and everywhere they wanted to go. And then they're doing this all in cash, as you said. So I, I want to start there uh, with SOT number three, where she talks about, uh, you know, carrying cash, keeping up to $15,000 in cash at her home. And, you know, she at, she at one point she said, I think it's good advice for all women to keep the, and I'm listening to this. Anyway, let's play that clip and, and then we'll just go from there. So my question was, where did that cash originally come from? If it didn't cash, come out of the bank? Cash is uh, fungible. Mm -hmm. I had cash for years in my house. So for me to tell you the source of when it comes from, when you go to Publix and you buy something, you get $50, you throw it in there. When It's been my whole life. When I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that. Like, to tell you, I just have cash in my house. I don't have as much today as I would normally have, but I'm building back up now. So you just put money in. It's a very good practice. I would advise it to all women. So you can't identify when you came into this cash or where the cash came from? I didn't say I couldn't identify it. No, nobody gives me anything. I am sure that the source of the money is always the work, sweat, and tears of me. What you asked me for is... When did the money go in there? What I am trying to tell you is, so I got divorced in 2005 from my husband. And, and no, 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 it's important. You said, where did the money come from? Well, and I need to tell you where the money came from. And so for questions? many, many years, I have kept money in my house. That money in my worst days has probably only been 500 or $1,000. At my best days, I probably had $15,000 in my house at Kate. cash. At all times, there's going to be cash in my house or wherever I'm laying my head. The money that you paid Mr. Wade, the cash, in October of 2022, you do not know where that money came from. I do know where it came from. It came from my sweat and tears. Shemeika, there's so many layers to this. So many, this is a 50 some odd year old woman, uh, has a high profile job, a law degree from some university. I may have to hop online to figure out where, why, how. But, <clears throat> or wherever I lay my head, that, that, that again, is she, this sounds, that's how hoes talk, just quite frankly. I mean, that, that's how, wherever I lay my head, this woman was so ghetto and so arrogant it blew my mind and I called you and I was like, are you watching this? This is incredible. But just the wherever I lay my head, I, I just don't hear polished, professional woman talking that way. Absolutely. And I thought I was listening to something. I, I thought I was watching a video that had a voiceover. I was like, gosh, they're working really fast fast to kind of make jokes of this. I did not think, you know, I thought I had clicked on a live link, but I was like, this can't be real because she sounds so unprofessional. And I was thinking to myself, there are times when I've had large amounts of cash in the house, stashed in the fireplace, sometimes in a safe. And I know exactly where it came from. It came from drug dealers. So for her to say that she has this amount of cash anywhere she lays her head, I don't see how anyone is seeing this woman as credible. You know, I she just sounds like she's very unprofessional. So I believe she's doing unprofessional things. Bottom line. I, I want to couple it with SOT 13, where, again, this is like she talks like a drug dealer not a district attorney, not a college-educated, professional, high-class person. L let's play SOT 13. And then he tells me how much it is, and I give him the money back. I don't, just like you're asking me about the money with Robin, I don't do my friends like that. So if you tell me it's a G, then you're going to get $1,000. If it, Whatever it is, I didn't ever make him produce receipts to me. Whatever he told me it was, I gave him the money back. If you tell me it's a G, I get. 
What? What are we watching? This is, I, I can't believe, this is embarrassing. You know, I won't even talk to my friends that way. If I'm talking to someone, I want them to see that I know what I'm talking about, that I'm smart. Sometimes people will say slang to me, and I may know exactly what they're saying, but I want to get them in a habit of speaking like they have some sense. So I'll say, what what, what does that mean? What is a G? What is... I know what it is, but she's sitting on a stand. Your whole career could go up in flames from this decision, and she's not taking it seriously. There were times she was slouched in her seat. You know, I I mean, she should have just thrown up gang signs because she was just... <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Why would you say this on a stand? And it does go to the delusion that people talk about when it comes to black women. We can do no wrong. There's no accountability. But we knew she lacked accountability when she got up there for MLK in that church and said, you know, that long speech. But it is amazing that someone on this professional level, you know, still can't get out the ghetto. So, Shamika, obviously you're a woman. Uh, you've raised three daughters. Part of that original clip was her advising women. I think all women should keep cash in their home, thousands of dollars of cash in their home. And, and, and so Fannie Willis is presenting herself like she's got street smarts and that she's from the streets. What woman with street smarts would tell, advise other young women, yeah, keep a lot of money around your house. You know, l l let the predators, give the predators a big target. Put that target on you. Oh, yeah, she keeps large sums of cash at her house. I, I just, is this good advice? Is this what you're telling your daughters? No, absolutely not. Now, I do tell them if they're going on a date or even if they're going on a trip with friends, it's good to have some cash because you never know what may happen with your check card or whatever. You don't know if you're going to go on this date and the, the guy may flag. You want to have some cash in the uh, in the event of an emergency. But I would never tell them to have $15,000 laid around the house, nor would I announce that to the whole nation? Like you're on the whole, you're you're on this stand telling the whole nation that wherever you lay your head, it's possible for you to have fifteen thousand dollars with you on you because here you were having an affair with a married man. Did you have fifteen thousand in the hotels as you were going along? This is silly to me. So I do think it's wise to have cash on hand, but not that much. That That's prostitute behavior, drug dealing behavior. I told you, I've had that amount of cash in my house. I know exactly where it came from, though. <laughs> Look, uh, yes. And, and any time I've had large sums of cash on me, I was... Headed somewhere to do something up to no good. Oh, yeah, let, let me take $1,500, $2,000, $3,000 into this strip club. Uh, let me carry this uh, big bag of money I just won gambling back to mm -hmm. my hotel or to my house. But this is just bad advice in terms of like, if you have $15,000 or $150,000 or $1.5 million, you don't leave it just laying around collecting dust. You put it somewhere where it can collect interest and where it can work for you. Right. Period. And, End of story. And I know there are questions about bank security at this point and, you know, are these banks going to collapse and all this other stuff. But there are places for you to put money in the market and where that, that it can draw interest. You, uh, I, I'd rather hear about you buying gold than just having that money sitting around your house collecting dust and, and tempting you in uh, to doing shady things. This, this woman sounded so corrupt and so shady. She had tax liens for three and $4,000, but it's on the stand talking about, 
it's not uncommon for me to have from five hundred to fifteen thousand dollars in cash. I, I've I've taken money from my campaign in cash yes. and brought it home. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds yeah. very illegal, very corrupt, uh, very. very entitled. Just I, I, I and and I can't believe. And and this is where this worship of the black woman has led them to a level of foolishness. Mm -hmm. that, because I can't believe advisors didn't tell. Didn't say, Fanny, 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 what what are you doing here? D don't take the stand. D don't take the stand in an obvious, rushed, emotional. You're taking this personal. Mm -hmm. oh, she was not a lawyer at all yesterday. This was an enraged black woman. How dare this white woman, Trump lawyer, and any of these other white people question me at all? And so let, let's play the. I'm not on trial uh, clip is sock number two. Uh, yesterday you were on trial. <laughs> you know, your credibility was on trial, but she's totally uh, divorced from that reality. Let's play the clip. So your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken when no, Mr. Wade. Well, no, 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 look. I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So, I, I, Right now, <laughs> she's on trial. The, the, the judge is going to make a decision about whether she's qualified or disqualified from prosecuting this case. The, 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 she, we've built a fantasy world for women, black mm -hmm. women in particular, and they live in that fantasy. Absolutely. And people praise them on it. I saw the shade room post this exact same clip and Tyrese Gibson, who, you know, was one of the first people saying she said what she said. And the people in the comments like, yes, queen. And that's right. And I'm thinking, but she is on trial. They're trying to make sure she's the right person to actually, you know, what her character is. Don't you all understand if she's a liar here, she could be a liar in other areas. I don't understand what people don't get. And it's funny because we have this thing that the loudest, the, you know, snappiest neck, the, the eyes that back the most means you're actually telling the truth. And as they said in the comments, standing on business, that does not mean she's standing on business. She's looking like an angry, bitter black woman, like you said, taking it personal. If you have nothing to hide, why are you so defensive? It goes even back to the money. Like if you have nothing to hide, why wouldn't you put that money in the bank at the very least in a safe deposit box? She's doing something that she has no business doing. And you would think because of some of these other trials that, you know, big name cases that she's been over, people would want her to be credible. They don't. They hate Trump so much. The, the Trump derangement syndrome is so great that they don't care. They don't even want to look at the truth. The truth is this woman is not credible. I'm not sure if this is Trump derangement. I, I, I'm really not. I, I think this is black idolatry. This mm. is, I'm going to defend anything black, no matter how mm. ignorant, no matter how debaucherous, no matter how bad it looks, I'm going to pretend that uh, it's great and that you're the crazy person for expecting her to act in a proper respectful way. That's the white way of doing things. The True. black way, which is the right way, is to have as much attitude and show as much disrespect and contempt uh, for your colleagues and peers. Don't even put on any facade that you have any respect for them. I, 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 was, I'm, I was going to wait and unpack more of this, but I want to show you this clip of Joy Reid and, and the gang over at MSNBC 
saying that what a great representation of black womanhood that this was and is. Let's play clip 15, SOT 15. I, this just blew my mind. This was if standing on business was a witness. <laughs> that was what we saw today. <laughs> and what we also saw today, frankly, was a clinic in black womanhood and particularly high profile black womanhood, right? If you're a black woman in this country, you don't have to be a district attorney prosecuting the former president of the United States to really understand what it means to have your integrity or your professionalism questioned uh, or the urge to defend your character or reputation, right? And so that's what you really saw on display today. Yes, she was angry, but she was also insulted. She was offended. Uh, you know, if, if, if somebody thinks that they're being lied on, you know, and, and especially Fonnie Willis, prepare to defend yourself because that was exactly what she came to that stand prepared to do today of her own free will. Well, and the thing is, Katie, you as a woman of color who have to stand in a courtroom, you know this all too well. You know, look, I have a book about this, about the way they did this with Marley Evers Williams. Be pretty, but not too pretty. Be, you know, forceful, but not too forceful. Don't be loud. Don't be angry. Excuse me if you're questioning my integrity and accusing me of hiring somebody that I was having an affair with when I'm telling you the timeline and then asking, did my kids live at my house? You want to know how much money I have? Is he giving me cash? She was insulted and rightfully so. This idea that women of color have to sit there and be demure and take it. There were people on social media who were saying, oh, she's coming in too hot. No, she wasn't. She was offended and she had a right to be offended. What, what's crazy, and this is why I don't call it Trump derangement. It's just idolatry and it's just insanity. Is because Joy Reid, if that were Donald Trump defending himself, acting offended at the lies he believes that are being told on him. He would be completely out of line. He would be completely unjustified. He would be undignified. It's behavior beneath the presidency. Mm -hmm. This woman, because she's black and has a vagina, she can respond however she wants, as angry as she wants to be, as emotional as she wants to be, as disrespectfully as she wants to be, and that's great. And anybody that has a problem with it, it's because you're racist. I, I, Jason, Tamika, I'm you have I, I watched this. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just going to say you're right. You have a, a great point because part of why we're here, uh, even going through this, you know, I heard her uh, Fanny say um, these people tried to steal the election. Part of why we're even here is because they did not like Trump's behavior in response to an election that he thought was unfair, an election that many of us thought was unfair and that something had been done that was not, you know, quite right and above board. So you're right. They actually would have something to say if he was, you know, being snappy or when he's actually stood strong and said how he really felt. So it has to be more of just the black woman thing. And were you distracted by Joy's hair at all? Of course I was. Of course. Of course. That That's crazy. And she talked about, you know, be pretty, but not too pretty. I don't think that's her story. Um, I don't think she's ever had to worry about that. But, you know, I just think it's silly the way she continues to talk about black when she doesn't even seem to really uh, embrace blackness. To me, you're not embracing your blackness sitting on national television with a blonde wig. That's, I mean, these women are delusional, Jason. There is no other word to say it. And you heard the lady say standing on business. You don't, you can stand on business with facts. You can stand on business and be passionate, but not rude, be straightforward, but not condescending. You don't have to be ghetto all the time. Now, if you're sitting with your girlfriends and you just want to relax and y'all are chilling at the bar, be who you are, relax, but you're in a professional setting and people are watching you. All of these little girls that you claim should be able to look up to see a black woman shouldn't have to look to see a an angry one, to see a disrespectful one, to see one who has gone to college and still can't express herself on a higher level. These little girls shouldn't see that.
And so it's poor representation and I get sick of them feeling like they can just present whatever to the world and we have nothing to say. We just have to accept it because this is what, you know, black women are. No, we aren't always like that. And you can actually present yourself in a better way and still get respect. I, I take the, the woman that said standing on business. That was the first thing is like, well, hold on, you on MSNBC <laughs> talking politics. You're not on BET mm-hmm. talking with rappers and, and you know, standing on. Who are you trying to communicate to? Because once she's standing on business, there are people that are unaware of that slang and that that's the new thing to say. And so the audience that you're speaking to on MSNBC, you're, you're talking a language they don't even understand, but you think it's cool, you think it's hip, and it speaks to, because when I was watching Fani yesterday, the, 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 the number one thing I was like, she's not talking to lawyers. She's not talking to professional people. She's not talking to politicians. She's sitting there like, I'm at the beauty shop and I'm talking to my girlfriends and I'm trying to win the debate with them. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to win in the court of law. I'm not, and and so there's like, they've turned, everything's a stage. MSNBC, that's a stage to, talk to the barbershop or the beauty shop or to put on some kind of uh, halfway dressed up minstrel show. Because again, th- that's what I'm telling you, when I look at that, when I see Joy with that little fake blonde wig that's too small for her head and, and just looks <laughs> ridiculous, I'm like, this is a minstrel show. And she's got all this makeup caked on with the blonde wig. Put her back on screen, please. Because I'm just telling you, look, I- I'm just telling all of that makeup with this blonde wig and red lipstick, that looks like blackface. Th- that, that looks like a minstrel get up and outfit. Then, again, none of these women, but Joy and Standing on Business Woman, this don't be too pretty. No one's ever told either one of these women to tamp down the pretty. It, it, right. They, that's never, it's almost like, hey, Jason, you're, you're too skinny. Now nah, ain't nobody ever told me that. Uh, <laughs> so cut it out. But, but I, I don't want to just take personal shots. But I, I'm, I'm just, I'm offended. I'm offended that we're representing ourselves this way and that people are defending it. And, mm-hmm. and it makes me feel like I'm from outer space. And that the people that I knew growing up and what we were trying to accomplish and what we were about growing up, being better, representing ourselves in a way that brought honor and dignity to our name, our family, and other black people, all of that's out the window now. And and it's like, let me show you how ghetto I can be. Mm -hmm. And if you question my ghetto-ness, you're a racist or a coon. Yep. I, I, I'm trying to, are we, are, are there more of us or more of them at this point? And, and, and I'm, it's an inappropriate or politically incorrect question, but I, I got to ask it because that's what I sit here and wonder. We should be outraged by what Fani did and these people that came on TV and defended it. It, it outrages me, but I, I'm sorry, am I in the minority? You know, I'm I'm starting to feel like we are in the minority because when you look at, I mean, look at Kamala or Kamala, how she tries to blend in and act black. It's almost like, you know, you can't be in a high profile position and have class, you know. I don't even think she was just talking, you know, like she was in the beauty shop. I think she was talking that way so that the masses of black people could gather and like her and be on her side. And in the, you know, eyes of public opinion, she's right or she's great or she's representing black women. And it's almost like once you know, to be on that side, that's how you have to carry yourself. If you're on the right side and you're trying to present yourself in a way that your family raised you, 
as you said, you're automatically a coon. You're automatically an Uncle Tom. When we look at people like Ben Carson and call that man an Uncle Tom, after everything that he's done and the accomplishments that he made, we look down on him. You know, black people look down on him and Thomas Sowell but yet they will esteem somebody like P. Diddy or, you know, Ice-T, somebody that's, you know, not representing black people in the best light. That's black. That's the black excellence. That's the uh, black girl magic, we would say, for Fonnie Will Will Willis. We wouldn't say that, though, about any Condoleezza Rice. She wouldn't get black girl magic. So we have our priorities mixed up. And when you talk about how we were raised, I look back at old pictures of my grandmother or my great grandmother. And I look at the way these women were dressed, the way even my grandfather and great grandfather used to dress. They always presented themselves the best and wanted to be seen in the best light. And it wasn't about being, you know, or acting white. This was black excellence. And even with a little amount of money, with uh, a limited education, that was black excellence. And they always walked around like they were proud. I know you don't like that word, but people, and not because of their skin color, but because of who they were on the inside. And now we've thrown all of that out the window. Your character doesn't matter. Integrity doesn't matter. Your skin color and forming this allegiance with the black community on a whole and acting like an ass that's what matters now. And when you hear Joy Reid talk, when you hear Fonnie Willis talk, this is what it seems that we hold important. Skin color and being ignorant. That's what we like. That's what we allow. Those are the people that we esteem and we won't check them. But we'll talk about Ben Carson. We'll talk about Clarence Thomas and put them down. People will drag Candace Owens and put her down and say she don't like black people. But tell me, why do we equate asking more from black people and saying, black people, you can. You can do whatever you put your mind to. You can have the highest grades. You can get the best job. Why is that equated to not liking black people? But then thinking that a black person should be ghetto or, you know, getting shot every two minutes, that's black. That That's somebody that actually loves their people, but the other person does not. So let me pause here for a second, take care of a little business, take care of, one of another one of our great sponsors. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Roll Call, and then I'm going to circle back to you. We're going to continue the conversation about Fonnie Willis. <clears throat> After you've tried all the big brand names and you realize what's missing, the personal touch, small batch spirits are the only way to enjoy the finest libations the USA has to offer. Discover premium American-made spirits from Coppercraft Distillery. Coppercraft Distillery's award-winning black label straight bourbon whiskey is crafted along Michigan's manufacturing coast where industrious auto manufacturers Furniture makers, farmers, and entrepreneurs have created quality goods and export, exported their handiwork across the nation. These craftspeople have given us a rich heritage, proving that craft and time yield incredible results. The same is true for incredible whiskey. Our distillers artfully source and blend the finest ingredients to create premium small batch whiskeys with rich, smooth flavor. Follow the distillery online to discover a new way to enjoy Old favorites with a wide selection of tried and true recipes featuring Coppercraft vodka, rum, gin, and bourbon. Or Craft Bokeman, a Coppercraft can cocktail for an instant drink to enjoy. Buy online, ship to your door at coppercraftdistillery.com. Use my promo code FEARLESS. Guys, I want to uh, spend a moment here uh, talking about uh, Roll Call 2.0, you guys remember Roll Call last year. It was a tremendous event. Uh, we're ready for Roll Call 2.0. I need you there. Saturday, June 1st is Roll Call. May 31st, we'll have special VIP event on Friday, May 31st. That weekend, uh, we want to bring men to Nashville as we come together to talk about sacrifice 
and how growth requires sacrifice. The reason things are trending in the wrong direction, the reason our culture's trending in the wrong direction is because we as men, we haven't lived up to our duty to make the necessary sacrifices to protect the freedoms, values, principles, to protect our way of life here in America. We haven't made the sacrifices. And so we're gonna talk about what stands in the way of us making those sacrifices. Is it our perversion? Is it our ignorance? Is it our cowardice? Is it an, a selfishness? What is standing in the way of us making the necessary sacrifices so that the generations behind us get to enjoy the America we took for granted in our youth and now we're all complaining about, hey, where'd that America go? How can we make America great again? You know how we can make America great again? By men living up to their responsibilities, by men making sacrifices. The people that created this great, wonderful country, they sacrificed everything for us. What are we willing to sacrifice? Jesus Christ sacrificed his life for us. What are we willing to sacrifice? It's got to be something or this thing's going to continue to spiral out of control. I need you guys here. Uh, we've blocked off some hotels. Uh, with special rates. Uh, we have an incredible cast of guest speakers and events. This is, last year was great. This year is going to be awesome and off the chain. Uh, if you're a pastor or a church leader out there, anywhere in the country, if you want to sponsor a bus trip and you can bring six or 12 or 25 people from your congregation, we have special rates set aside for you. Special discounted rates set aside for those of you that want to come in groups from your church or whatever men's group you have. Come join us here in Nashville. Uh, visit fearlessarmyrollcall.com, fearlessarmyrollcall.com. Again, Roll Call 2.0 right here in Nashville, Rocket Town, Saturday, June 1st, 2024, fearlessarmyrollcall.com. All right, uh, let's jump back uh, to Shamika and our conversation about Fonnie Willis. Uh, <laughs> Shamika, I want to play, uh, we played the st stash here. She, I want to start with SOT 6, and then we'll go to SOT 5 after that. She starts talking about uh, Nathan Wade, this special prosecutor she hired to uh, prosecute Trump. I think $700,000, $800,000 got funneled to his law firm uh, during this process. Uh, and, and so F Fani had said, made some comments in pre earlier videos how no one that works under her, uh, she would ever have some kind of personal sexual relationship with. Um, and they were questioning her about that about whether word was uh, whether Wade was working under her. Let's play the clip. What you said was you won't work, you won't sleep with people who work under you. Do you not consider Mr. Wade working under you? I consider Mr. Wade to be an agent. An agent? Yeah. All right. An appointee is what I really re re think of him as. Your point, whatever Meredith has, uh, Ms. Merchant, is on the record. Thank you. Next question. What is, James Bond is an agent. And so is, is that what she meant by, you know, I, he's like James Bond. He's 007 and, you know, uh, he's my, he's my pipe fitter that I hired. <laughs> what is she, what is agent? What, what, uh, what's the, I consider him an agent. What, I consider she him a sugar baby. I, I don't know. What's, what's agent? Yeah, she was double talking. This was her way of trying to, again, escape accountability because she knows that in the past she said she would never do exactly what she has done. And, and so instead of saying, you know, yeah, I said this before, but I changed my mind or I said this before, but he looks so good. Instead of just being honest, now she wants to create something that's not really there. An agent, that that's silly. You you sleep with agents? I, you vacation with agents? This is silly. It's not making sense. But that's just her, again, dodging accountability. 
So uh, at one point, I found this, I will not emasculate a black man. And I found this incredible on three, four, six, maybe 12 different levels. Uh, let's play SOT 5. Uh, last area, briefly. Yes, sir. You had contact with Mr. Wade in the tw year 2020, correct? Ooh, um, I had some contact with Mr. Wade. Would you explain when you say some contact? Please tell us, the con talk about 2020. I had some contact with Mr. Wade in 2020. Um, one of the reasons your allegations are so preposterous or mismerchants that you have joined is... Ma'am, no, no, I no, didn't no, no, ask you about the allegations. I asked you about your contact. That's all I ask you, okay? I appreciate that, that you want to say something, but I'm interested in did you have contacts with Mr. Wade in 2020, and your answer so far has been yes, correct? Very limited contact because... Um, Mr. Wade had a form of cancer that makes your allegations somewhat ridiculous. And I do ap appreciate the characterization. I'm not going to emasculate a black man, but I'm, I'm just telling you. I'm sorry, what? I'm not going to emasculate a black man. Did you understand that? What? what? She, he's asking a relatively benign, innocent question. She drives the conversation off the road, starts talking about this man's health. Mm -hmm. and, and, th and then, without provocation, for no reason, then twisted into, I'm not going to emasculate a black man. Do you understand me? And it's like, she, she's basically saying, and I don't know, I don't know if we should beep this out. I'm just going to keep it real. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's Saturday. Hey, this guy's doesn't work, but I'm yes. not going to tell y'all that. Right. Th that's, that's what she just did. She completely yeah. emasculated this man while lying and pretending that she wasn't. She doesn't <laughs> like Nathan Wade. She doesn't like anybody. That, that I, I, I just... She emasculated the man while pretending not to emasculate him. This, she's talking to the beauty shop. She's talking to her girlfriends. This woman has animus and hatred in her heart and no respect for any man or woman, anybody that questions her, but your thoughts. I'm glad you said it so I didn't have to. That's all I heard as she was talking that it doesn't work. You know, I tried. I touched it. I might even put my mouth on it. It, it didn't work. It wasn't going to satisfy me. It was, That's all I heard while she was talking. And so for her to, to dodge the question, all the man said was, did you have contact? Yes or no? It was limited. Then you're telling his business. So now I, for me, the limits are, I touched it. The limits are, it was right there in my face. The limits are, but it wouldn't stand up. It wouldn't stay up. It wouldn't do what it's supposed to do because of how she responded to the question. So then to say, I will not emasculate a black man. It's unfortunate that so many people will hear that without hearing what she just did before she even said that sentence and think, oh, she's on black men's side. She's not because she could have just said yes or no and waited to see what the next question was if she truly was not trying to emasculate him. This this was a disaster and he should never talk to her again after this situation because she drug him thinking that she wasn't or pretending because she thinks so many people are stupid pretending as if she wasn't because those of us with common sense and ears to hear, we heard exactly what she was trying to say. It was, it, it reminds me of uh, the black lesbians who started Black Lives Matter, who uh, came up with a website, a mission statement for Black Lives Matter that uh, never mentions the black man, never mentions father, uh, wants to disrupt uh, the nuclear family, 
And somehow y'all think the black lesbians who have no interest in the black man, y'all think they care about George Floyd. <laughs> you, 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 it, 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 it's, these are serpents. These are snakes. These are some of the most dishonest people I've ever seen in the, on the planet. It, it, it's the lies that they will tell. This woman crushed Nathan Wade and then pretended like she was helping him. The same way, again, the Black Lives Matter crowd and women and all the elites and all the, the black people sitting on TV that wouldn't piss on George Floyd if he was on fire, pretending like, oh, I'm heartbroken, George Floyd's gone. Oh my God, I was just swiping right on his Tinder profile right before <laughs> Derek Chauvin killed him. Cut it, it's a lie. Yes. It's a, it's a lie. The disdain, and then, then just on the other level, there's just common sense here. This is an officer of the court. She's a district attorney, an officer of the court, and our criminal justice system is based on the idea that justice is blind. And so an officer of the court to say, I would not emasculate a black man. Did you hear me? Well, anybody white, anybody brown, anybody that's maybe not banging her or that she's not paying to sleep with her would hear that and go, well, oh, so you would emasculate me, mm -hmm. a white man. She just emasculated the black man too, but again, she she, it's a racist statement. And if a white person sat on a court, uh, on testifying on a stand and said, I would not do this to a white man. We would call that person a racist and they would run them out of the job. Donald Trump and his team have every right to be like, this woman's a racist. You got an outright bigot prosecuting me. And you can see how personal this is and how none of this has anything to do with justice. It's her personal agenda. I, I, I looked, I said, like, this is an officer of the court just loudly saying, no, I ain't got, I took the blinders off and I'm doing a race-based game here. And, and no, no one cares. No, no, no one wants to point this obvious racism out. Right. I, so I, she I can't, this Sunday, I can't wait to see what, what church <laughs> she goes to and what black male minister welcomes her to the pulpit to spew this load of BS. Mm-hmm. Because she is definitely saying, I won't emasculate this black man, even though she just did, but I'll emasculate Donald Trump and in any other white person I can get my hands on. And what's funny, though, is you equating them to the BLM women. That's exactly who she comes across as because, because sentences before this or a few minutes before she went into this whole, I will not emasculate a black man. She talked about how she doesn't need a man, how, you know, she oh, has her own there. money. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just sit and wait <laughs> because. <laughs> no, that's where we're going next. So Shamika done previewed it. Here's, she don't need a man. Side 11. Uh, play that. It's interesting that we're here about this money. Mr. Wade is used to women that, uh, as he told me one time, the only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich. We would have brutal arguments about the fact that I am your equal. I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan. A man is a companion. And so there was tension always in our relationship, which is why I was give him his money back. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. She don't need a man. And, and then this is where I, I come. She does not like Nathan Wade at all. Uh -uh. And he, he clearly was too patriarchal and old school for her. And so she said, you know what? I'm going to sneak in. I'm going to get on this witness stand and I'm going to sneak in that this dude's private parts don't work because he's mm -hmm. got some illness. I'm going to sneak that in and emasculate, but I'm going to pretend like I'm not emasculating him. 
Uh, but, but there's what they call a stereotype about the angry black woman. And when I heard this, I don't need a man and blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, we argued, I'm his equal. This is why I'm so passionate and hard on this, this biblical worldview that she clearly doesn't have. And so I, I, I can't wait for this Sunday to see which church platforms this heretic, this lunatic, th this angel of wickedness. I can't wait to see what church welcomes her to spew another line of BS like she did previously. But yeah, she don't need a man, Shamika. Right. And so every time you threw the money back in his face, did you not think that was emasculating him? To tell a man you don't need him, is that not emasculating him? To pretty much tell him he's not who God created him to be, which is someone that's a protector and a provider, is that not emasculating him? So it's crazy that she then circle back to say, I will not emasculate a black man, but you will. Not only did you just do it when you talked about his, um, you know, lack of performance in the bedroom, you showed that before when you said, I don't need him. You know, he's not a plan, but that is the plan because God intended for man and woman to be together that's the plan. So what do you mean he's not a plan? That is the plan for men and women to get together and procreate and replenish the earth. That's the plan. And so she will emasculate a black man. And every time this man spent time with her, if in fact she actually gave him his money back, which I don't believe, you know, all the time, but she was throwing it up in his face that he's nothing compared to her. She believes in emasculation. That's who she is. And it's the same way the Black Lives Matter women didn't like black men unless they were dead. This woman cares nothing about this black man. She used him to benefit her. And that's all this is about. And now that, you know, things are looking a little shaky, she will gladly, quickly throw him under the bus. Yeah, so she's funneling money to him and he's financing trips and vacations. And um, there was, I don't even think we had this clip, but at one point she was, I did 50 big. I did 50 big. And I was like, this woman's at the beauty shop. She's, <laughs> she's, she's bragging about her 50th birthday party. And I, I'm, what does this have to do with it? This was crazy, but, but she, in case anybody missed how ghetto she is, she actually, we'll play sock number 10 here, she bragged about how ghetto she is in comparison to Nathan Wade. He's a Southern gentleman. She's not. Play the clip. Did you meet with Mr. Wade at all? Once the, mo once the motion was filed, did you meet with Mr. Wade and talk to him about the motion that I filed to disqualify you. On January, this first January motion? But, yes. I don't know if you could say talked about. Um, I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman. We missed the, at the very end and said, and I'm not. Uh, <laughs> and, and bottom line, she said, I have no class. This man tries to present himself with class. I don't. And she's bragging about it. And, and who, McAfee or whoever this judge was, if he does not disqualify this woman, if, if lawyers and federal prosecutors or people aren't offended by this display, and it's like, this is... What's running our criminal justice system? This, someone who's bragging about how little composure and how little class they have, and, and just, if I'm a professional black woman, this is why I'm so joy reading these others, like, this is how you present us? 
This, I, I think I told you this. I know I told someone that if we wound the clock back to 91 or 92, whenever Clarence Hill or Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill uh, happened, Fonnie Willis is Clarence Thomas with a vagina and no brain. If, if Clarence Thomas had no brain, he would have sounded just as idiotic as she did yesterday. Because that, that's why I was like, this is a baby Clarence Hill, or Anita H Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill situation, except a retarded person is actually being questioned and grilled rather than one of the smartest men America has ever produced. And, and we got a full-blown clown show. And, and I, I want to broaden it. And, and I'm sorry, I, I just, I sound, I don't know how I sound, but I just sound like truthful. The Democrat Party, when, we, we got a clip here of Barbara Lee. She's running for something somewhere, and she wants a $50 minimum wage. Uh, we got the Hip Hop Task Force, Jamal, Jamal Bowman and, and these guys. We have uh, the black mayor, Brandon Johnson, uh, that thinks gun detectors are racist and uh, is, is helping Chicago uh, put up, uh, take care of illegal immigrants and just everything. And it's like the Democrat Party is installing intentionally the dumbest black people they can into positions of power. That, that, that's the only thing I can think. It's like, you must be stupid to be qualified for a job in the Democrat Party if you're black. And, and th this connects to everything I've been talking about the last three or four weeks about Stephen A. Smith. It connects to what Cat Williams was talking about. These people are installed, installed intentionally. It has mm -hmm. to be. Yeah, and I think it actually shows how little the Democrat Party thinks of black people. They're not looking for the best and the brightest because they don't think the best and the brightest exist. When she was talking about this man and saying, I, I wouldn't call it a conversation, the translation for that was, I cursed him out. That's really what she was saying. I called and I went off on this man that I won't emasculate. In that moment, I emasculated him again because he couldn't get a word in because I was just telling him exactly what was on my mind. So it wasn't a conversation. It was me cursing him out. That's exactly what I heard as she was talking. And again, look at her posture, how she's just slumped over in the seat like she doesn't care about anything. So. I think the Democrat Party, when they say because they came out a, a week or two ago and said that black women were the backbone of the Democrat Party, what I heard them saying was it's OK for y'all to walk around here like linebackers. It's OK for y'all to walk around here like you don't have any class, like you're going to be uh, like that ball woman that went um, dashing to the floor or whatever, trying to save Joe Biden. It's okay to be manly and, and not feminine and loud and rude. The backbone, no other nation, as Shahrazad Ali said, of, of women thinks that the, the woman is the backbone. They all understand it's the men. But when it comes to black women, they don't see men as the backbone of our culture. It's them. You know, it, they want to be in charge. They want to run it and they're running in, into the ground. Look at how she presented herself. It is so embarrassing as a black woman to see someone who should be on a higher level, level, who should be showing a certain amount of class. This woman is educated, yet she sat up there and couldn't even have good posture, didn't even care for us to see that her breath should be separated from her stomach. I mean, it was just embarrassing to watch. <laughs> Crazy. 
Uh, Shamika, I appreciate you uh, joining me on a Saturday. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure we may have to circle back to this topic. I'm sure Fonny's not done, and, and maybe the next time we'll be talking about Alvin Bragg over in New York. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, we'll play some tomorrow, but uh, we may see you once again this weekend. Steve Kim and I uh, are going to talk about uh, Caitlin Clark. And we'll either release that later today or first thing Sunday morning. Uh, so we got some weekend content. We're going to take care of it. There's no football this weekend. So you got us. You got Fearless. Thank you. Nothing in life like freedom. Came like a fighter, striking like a ladder, making all this moves for freedom. I want freedom. No negotiation, my system, no relation. We all just want to have freedom. Sitting on the corner, never been alone. I'm breaking my back for freedom. Bless, we are living, get back. We are receiving all the seed when we all want to be free. We want freedom I just want, I wanna be I just want